Hey everyone, Rob here, and we've got some news on November 13th. It's the first thing in the morning, so I wanted to do a quick update. I mean, there's not a huge amount of stuff going on, um, but some news to report on, of course. No eruption has happened as of yet, so if you're seeing pitch, pictures or, or people saying that an eruption has started as of 7.26 in the morning, and I'm saying that because, you know, usually when I stop these things, something happens. Uh, no eruption as of 7.26 in the morning on the 13th of November. Now, a one meter deep sinkhole, sinkhole has formed throughout the town of Grindavik, um, and it's cl quite clear from this and all this other data that they have that the magma has reached a very shallow um, depth. And, and they're talking about tens of meters deep. I know the previous video we were saying 800 meters, tens of meters or closer. Now, this is what Thorvald Thorson, professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland, has said uh, to a lot of news agencies, to be honest. And what he's saying is that the sort of sinkhole formed when magma rises at a very shallow depth, which we're saying tens of meters, uh, and is close to the surface, it's difficult to exactly estimate how close it is to the surface, this magma. Um, but they were saying, you know, a couple of days ago it was measured 800 meters. All likelihood, it is much, much shallower now, uh, and it could be into the tens of meters, which, um, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, meter to feet, what is it, three? Yeah. So if you're saying, you know, 50 meters, uh, we're looking at, uh, yeah. So tens of meters, I'm guessing it's it's closer or less than 100. So we're looking at around 100 to what? one to 300 feet down, which is, is really not a lot. Now, um, Thorvald says that this, this sinkhole was discovered during photography and mapping of the area, and people just hadn't noticed it before, and um, that's just how it was. Now, if there was an eruption in the town, he says that the weight of the lava flow would be more to the west than to the sea. So if we're taking a look at uh, a map here, uh, it would go towards the the west of the town uh, rather than down that's what i mean that's his interpretation and he says something always goes the other way and it's very difficult to, to to determine anything about volcanoes before they're really going and even when they're erupted uh, it's very very difficult to to understand exactly what's going to happen next now it could be a few minutes until the eruption a few hours days or, or he's saying it might stop altogether and uh, just nothing happened. Uh, but uh, the probability of the, of, of the eruption is uh, is very high right now. And he is saying that as more time passes, and as more time passes without an eruption, the probability of the eruption inside the town decreases. So they're going to be meeting today, this morning, to discuss all of the, the new information. But... Uh, as that's pretty much the news right now. Now, yesterday, they had the residents of Grindvik were allowed to go into the town to collect things. Here you can see a picture from Vizier uh, with some people collecting belongings and uh, a huge amount of news coming out, just mostly talking about people going in. Now, they had last night reported that the biggest earthquakes were now moving over to Klavvat, which uh, we can see here, this big cluster here is Grindvik. Klemvat is to the right, this sort of big red one here. Uh, it's quite a bit away from the town, and if you're thinking about the previous eruptions, they kind of smack dab right in the middle between the two lines. But waking up this morning, now they're saying that the biggest earthquakes are now at Alde, which is a island to the you know off the coast of the Reykjanes Peninsula, but it's still along the same line going across. Um, but here we have the line that they're basically focusing on just this area. You can see that the Blue Lagoon is now kind of more or less safe. Uh, the town of Grindavik is obviously within a, a you know, not the best uh, situation, being that this line lies right beside their town. But uh, anything can happen. People were able to go in yesterday and, and get their belongings, get some pets. There's still pets uh, not accounted for, and, and I'm sure there's a ton of news on that. But uh, 
it's good that they're, they're allowing people to go into the city. Now, if we're taking a look at the earthquake maps, if you remember previous videos, this was just green stars everywhere. Uh, and now we're seeing quite a lot less of these green stars. We see the activity, although it's, it's still pretty intense, according to the chart down here at the bottom, uh, the actual magnitude is decreasing and it looks like it's spacing uh, spacing apart quite a bit. Now, what can happen in these situations, though, is you get this sort of low, this die down of earthquakes, and then clusters together, and you get another big one as the tension builds once again. So we're just going to see what happens. Um, you never know. Again, this is an explosive risk volcano. And if we're looking at some different flights, if we go to uh, the flight, of course, this is an older flight I took back when I went to Italy. But if we look at some flight trackers, uh, we can see uh, if we can go with the live view here, let's just jump over to Iceland. Those of you coming into Iceland or flying away, um, planes will be diverting away from this area here. Now it seems to me, now I, I haven't got confirmation from the you know airport or anything like that, but planes look to be going across this way. Maybe I need flight radar right that's a a better website so looking at the live flight tracker there we are that's a bit better to uh to take a look right so on here planes are going to be trying to avoid or it looks like they are avoiding this area here uh, which is grindavik and they will be flying to the north uh, more likely or down to the south of Grindavik, but they will not be flying here. Typically, the planes had been going along the coastline, but I think now they are going to be going across the land to make sure that, uh, I mean, the last thing that you want, uh, and this goes for me as well, if I'm <laughs> going to take a plane, is I don't want to be in this area should a explosive volcano erupt. So don't worry if you're coming to Iceland, it's still safe to do so. The airport is, is far enough away. You can see here's the airport, here's Reykjavik and the capital area, and then Grindavik. So you are still in a safe, it's still safe to come here. So don't don't be uh, canceling trips or anything like that. Uh, just be mindful of going to this area. But to be, to be honest, all the roads are closed, so you can't go there anyway. But uh, that's all the news for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll post some more as news emerges. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if, if I missed something, if there's some information that's come out that I just wasn't aware of, or just your thoughts. You know, does this make Iceland more exciting? Does it make it dangerous and you don't want to come? Uh, what's the situation? How does this impact people's view of Iceland? So thanks so much again.